And it was all overgrown and, you know, basically you could barely find, you know, where things were and you could barely see even the marker, the names that, that were there. In August of 1999, neighbors of Grandview Memorial Park began to complain about odors coming from the crematorium. It was the first sign that something was wrong, but it would be another six years until it was exposed that the bodies were being improperly interred. An investigation found approximately 4,500 cremated remains stacked in the mausoleum and in dumpsters. Trash and rodent feces was so heavy in the mausoleum, some areas were inaccessible. Seven bodies stored improperly in temporary wooden shutters. Some had been there since the 1930s. Financial mismanagement and the reselling of graves. My grandfather, um, my um, ma maternal grandfather is buried there. He was um, supposedly buried in 1998, um, or he was cremated and then, and then um, interred there. And then my grandmother was also interred there in 2005. My grandma, um, I actually grew up with her. Um, my grandma, um, pretty much, she was like my second mom. She raised me. And um, so losing her was like losing a parent. Um, my grandma was very spunky and uh, she's a sweet lady. She really was. Um, but she, she had, you know, she was stubborn, you know, and, but they, my grandfather and my grandmother both took care of all their burial needs before they even needed to. I mean, in their sixties, they had said, okay, we need to do this. And so they signed up with Neptune Society. Cordelia's grandmother, Margaret Cohen, was interred on October 14th, 2005. Her family was unaware of the investigation, but she sensed something was wrong. We thought that it was kind of fishy what they were doing because the the guy basically came out in a, um, it was like a John Deere and he didn't have any kind of, you know, he, he was in basically overalls and, and um, jeans and he took this big pole and he opened up the hole where the, you know, the ashes would go and he crammed the, the pole down there while we were standing there. And it's like, okay, it's ready. And then, you know, we couldn't, we had the urn for my grandmother and he goes, oh, well, you just do it like this. And he takes out his like, you know, knife and he pops off the, um, the end and he, you know, in, in the meantime, chipped off some of the, you know, the wood on the urn and he couldn't, you know, and then he tries to get the bag open and he gets, the, you know, he finally gets the bag open and then he's like, yeah, just drop it in there. For having somebody buried there, it's, you know, you expected a little more respect from, you know, I mean, that's, that's a person that they're putting in, into the grave. You know, and so you expect a little more, you know, consideration. In 2006, the owner, Marsha Howard, closed the gates to the cemetery. Pressure from the public began to increase and limited visitation began. But amidst the controversy and the storm, by November, Marsha Howard was found dead. It's honestly like a horror movie out there. It really is. I mean, you know, it's, it's something that you would see from a bad horror movie. Going over there, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, your nightmares are made of because honestly, I mean, it, it sounds weird, but you can just see, you know, the dead people walking around very unhappy, you know, because they don't, they're not at peace. The Department of Consumer Affairs reached a settlement with Grandview Memorial Park. Mosh Goldsman, Grandview Memorial Park's principal minority shareholder, received three years probation and was ordered to sell the property. A class action settlement for over $3 million was approved in January of 2010, and the cemetery remains for sale. It makes me sad that, you know, my, that I have, you know, grandparents that are in, in this place because it's, you know, it's a hellhole. Mm -hmm. 
You know, that that's what I think of it is it's it's a hellhole.